It's recorded statements where they clearly say, unless we destroy India's spiritual strength, we cannot really rule this country. If there is water in my well and you're thirsty, I think it's my business to go on my rooftop and shout that there is water here. But you think you're very civilized. If you go into an Indian village, they would not have heard of uh, the word yoga, <laughs> but they would have heard of Coca-Cola. We have been shy to market what is valuable to us. Yoga means people are thinking physical twisting and turning. They are not... you know, in its full depth and dimension, it's not going. For the first two and a half years, I spent my own money and conducted programs and programs. Coca-Cola has gone to every village in India. Yoga must go to every village in India. That's our mission. India is the birthplace of yoga. We were the land of uh, enlightened beings. So how and why do you think uh, the spiritual existence and the spiritual way of life got suppressed in the larger population over the years? Uh, because, you know, here we are a large population trying to rediscover and relearn the spiritual way of life. And also, do you think it's possible that over the course of time, we might again uh, forget or unlearn the spiritual existence? Yes, that's my question. Thank you. Namaskaram. Barka, well, uh, <laughs> about why uh, in India the spiritual process and yoga has gone down or to some extent and why it's blossoming everywhere else, though India is origin for sure, it's important to understand that historically India has gone through a raiga of invasions, occupation, and uh, invasions have always tried to control and manage people by imposing their religions, by imposing their culture, their language, in the process very systematically destroying the spiritual strength of the nation. Well, some of the rulers have openly mentioned its recorded statements where they clearly say, unless we destroy India's spiritual strength, we cannot really rule this country. So, there has been a systematic effort, but in spite of that, after over thousand years of invasions, uh, we have still retained quite a bit and now we are spreading to the whole world. Uh, well. Just some time ago, it was such that if you go into an Indian village, they would not have heard of uh, the word yoga, <laughs> but they would have heard of Coca-Cola. Here I am in Sedona, this is an antique Coca-Cola dispenser. So the marketing of Coca-Cola has been so effective, but we have been shy to market what is valuable to us what is most useful to human beings. We think the moment we market, something has become corrupt. I am also facing this all the time, why should you market yourself? It's not about me, it's about you. How do you know there is something valuable? My way of looking at life is, if there is water in my well and you are thirsty, I think it's my business to go on my rooftop and shout that there is water here. But you think you are very civilized, and you won't say anything, if people die of thirst, let them die of thirst, that's not your business. I am not that kind of a human being, my humanity overflows, so I scream. So we refused to scream because we were too subtle, we were too sensitive to certain things. And that's one reason why things have happened elsewhere and not so much in India, now it's beginning to happen. Well, ever since the International Yoga Day was declared by the United Nations, uh, as our Prime Minister uh, kind of pushed it in the UN for the first time, and now there's an International Day of Yoga, the entire world largely knows about at least the word yoga, even if they do not know the process, even if they do not practice. But still, yoga means people are thinking physical twisting and turning. They are not, 
you know, in its full depth and dimension, it's not going. Well, the <laughs> last thirty-nine years, seven days of the week, three hundred sixty-five days, myself and thousands of volunteers have been on, on and on. Well, uh, people, those who experience it, realize the value of it. Those who do not experience it, think it's a business, think it's a industry. But even if you want to call it a business, even if you call it an industry, what is wrong with a business? What is wrong with an industry, I'm asking? Business means that something that someone needs, someone decides to provide. Of course, for a cost, because if it needs to be sustained, there has to be a cost. Otherwise, we can do it for three days on our own steam and get exhausted. This happened to me in the very beginning. I was in various types of businesses. When I got out, for the first two and a half years, I spent my own money and conducted programs and programs. After two and a half years, all my savings ran out. Then I went through a struggle how to collect money, should I ask for money? I didn't want to do that. My <laughs> spiritual sense wouldn't allow me to announce a fee. So various things we did, but then in the end we saw the best thing is that even to get people's commitment to practice, it's very important that they also understand there is a price to it. Price is not for individual profit, but to sustain the service, there is a price. And if we are no more shy of such things, then we can see it can go international, everywhere in the world. Above all in India, it can happen in a big way. Our programs are entirely free in rural areas, but in urban areas they have to pay, depending upon what kind of premises they want to learn yoga in. What kind of premises they want to go through inner engineering in? Accordingly, we charge them because the premises cost. So, if we give up this shyness of charging for a service, <laughs> we are even paying... we were even paying service taxes till recently, till yoga was exempted some time ago. Till we give up this shyness, we will not spread it across. Coca-Cola has gone to every village in India. Yoga must go to every village in India, that's our mission, we will take it there. Uh, if the urban people pay for it, rural people will get it free <laughs>